Hello, brave and beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. This is Ona, and today's message is a little bit unusual because it, I'm, I'm, I'm recording this in order to answer a question that a viewer posed in a comment on one of my recent videos. And the question is, are archons real? That's A-R-C-H-O-N-S. And uh, this really caused me to delve into Gnostic myth as well as spiritual law. And I'm going to be sharing some of that and some downloads I'm re I've received recently around truth and belief. And I think there's definitely some synchronicity at play in the timing of this question along with those downloads. So I'm uh, excited to bring this to you, but I'm also wanting, because this actually also delves into the nature of evil <laughs> a little bit. Um, th there's a reason I'm sitting here in front of this waterfall. It was like my guidance was like, okay, well, do this near running water. And I brought some mud mugwort as an offering to the stream and to Mother Earth and asking that any negative entities or anything like that, um, <laughs> that they be cleansed and purified through this beautiful clear water, through this river and with the presence of Mother Earth and, uh, and the water. Um, okay, so that said, this question, are archons real? First, let's look at what are archons, okay? And this is something I wasn't actually really familiar with, so I did some research, and it turns out it's it's a Gnostic, or at least I, I'm thinking that this is maybe the, the, ta the, the um, what this person was asking about. There's a Gnostic belief or a Gnostic myth that stems from, from Gnosticism. The, the, this is a branch of Christianity that was very, very early. Um, and they had some very different ideas and some of which resonate with me some of which definitely don't okay so this is this gnostic creation myth that i was able to find and in this creation myth um, god sees himself reflected as in a mirror and this gives rise to a feminine being who gives birth or gives rise to um, all these divine beings, okay, that spring out of this union between God and this, this beautiful divine feminine. Um, and so these beings are holy beings, and in the beginning there is just this, basically it's heaven, it's fulfillment, it's this um, divine place that these beings are coming out of, and, and um, Christ comes out of it, and, and all these things. So most of these beings come forward in pairs, in masculine, feminine pairs, and they are things like truth and will and, um, and wisdom. So the youngest of them, Wisdom, decides that she wants to conceive just on her own. And so she gives, she does, and she gives birth to an abomination, right? Um, and his name is Yaldabaoth or Samuel. And then once she gives birth to him and realizes that he's really deformed, she rejects him, tosses him away, and he goes on to create the world, the material world, along with humans, but somehow a, a divine spark gets caught in the, in the humans. Okay, so the humans turn out to be having a divine spark. Um, and so Yaldabaoth gives rise to 12 archons, which are demonic beings that are, they, Gnostics believed to rule the earth and eventually these archons multiply into 365 archons one for every day of the year and these are these demon beings that are kind of ruling the world according to the Gnostics okay so first of all I, I just found this creation myth very very interesting <laughs> um, because it 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 embodies this idea that the earth was created in sin that the earth was um, is actually an unholy thing, like the material world, which actually to me really flies in the face of what I feel to be true. When I feel the earth, it feels so wonderful, right? And as we feel the love of Mother Earth, it also flies in the face of every uh, indigenous culture that I've ever been aware of, you know, where where the, the knowledge is that the earth is this beautiful. <laughs> its creation is divine um but you know 
where did this come from? I don't know, but it's, I find it interesting because there are certain things in Gnosticism that really, really do resonate with me. So I wanted to kind of delve into that. Um, and I've got some ideas around this, which I'm going to share in a little bit. But I, as I mentioned, I've had a few downloads recently, and they're all around the, the power of belief and the nature of truth. And I'm going to write them all up into a blog. So if you want to really delve into and see the exact wording that came through for me, you can do that. The, dis the link is going to be in the description below. But basically, what my guidance is telling me is that the world is made of love, is creative, created of love, and that this is a fundamental truth. They say that you may question this, but we don't recommend it because such questioning leads to suffering and will ultimately bring you to a dead end. Um, but they say, if you will assume the truth of this, choose to choose this truth over another, then you will begin to change the world through your beliefs, okay? And they go on, there's a whole lot that they, they uh, told me about the value of questioning, right? Um, so, so do check that out if you want. But the main idea here that I wanna bring forward is that, that we create the world through our beliefs. And, um, but they're saying truth is what you choose it to be. And by this, I'm, I'm, they distinguish between little case truth and uppercase truth, right? Um, so truth is what you choose it to be. What, what makes one concept truth and another not is that universe, truth with a capital T and another not is that universal truth, universal choosing of higher truth will ultimately result in sustained harmonious life while an agreement to choose a truth that's not aligned with the will of universal mind results in eventual termination of that line of inquiry, including any manifestations stemming from it. So in the larger picture, only those truths aligned with universal mind are in actuality truth. All right, so this gets a little convoluted, but the basic idea is, is that we are creator beings. We're created in the image of the great creator. Okay, and that you can think of the great creator as sort of like the master of the studio or the, um, the, the, the master scientist running the lab. And we as smaller beings are actually just creating little, little bits to go into the, the, the master creation. Um, and that we can only deal with small bits at a time. Um, they say in the smaller picture, you're allowed to choose alternate scenarios, which in your belief you endow with truth and begin to manifest as true, okay? So when you have a deeply held belief, you endow it with truth and it will start to manifest, okay? However, non-aligned truths, if these, what you take is true and you start to work on that through your beliefs, if, if that's not aligned with the higher truth, with higher will, with higher divine consciousness, it's gonna result in miscreation, okay? And which ultimately is either going to lead to termination or, you know, you die out, right? Or the choosing of more aligned truth. Now let's look at a couple of the spiritual laws. One is the law of mentalism, which is the universal, the law of universal um, oneness, right? And this is that all, everything that is, is part of universal consciousness, right? So that ultimately, if you're taking the big, big, big picture, it's all one and so it's like it's up to you to decide well is that good or not right um like typically i think most people will agree that the oneness is good it, it creates everything um you can put your own spin on that though um the other one that i want to bring forward is the law of relativity and this states that if you take any piece of of reality any piece of creation you can't really make any judgment about this. You can't really, um, you, know, you know, really say anything about it unless and until you put it in relationship to other things. You can only really judge something through its relationship. Okay, so let's take a look at nature because nature is really the ultimate teacher <laughs> as in my mind. And take a look, for example, um, if you take a wolf, for example, and you look at it from the point of view, its relationship with the deer, 
from the deer's point of view, a wolf is going to appear evil, right? And it is, it's a source of destruction and pain and suffering. Um, but if you take the higher perspective and look at wolf in terms of its relationship to its entire ecosystem, you get a whole different picture. And in fact, if you take the wolf and look at it as its relationship to deer, the whole herd of deer, the whole species of deer, it's actually benevolent, right? So just kind of keep these things in mind. Now let's look back again at this idea of archons, right? So what I want to look at is like, okay, where did this idea come from? And what if this idea of the world as, a, as an unholy place was actually an allegory within an allegory? What if you were looking at it as the world that humans are creating, the world as filtered through human belief and what's manifesting out of that, okay? Through egoic belief, in the world that is being created, um, there's a lot of miscreation happening. I think we can all agree with that. If you, you know, from just like, I don't have to name them, but all the egregious things that <laughs> are taking place have taken place on planet Earth. No wonder somebody could look at that and say, hey, the world's a cart you know, an, an evil place. I don't believe the, that it's intrinsic in the world. I believe the world is divinely created but we are also you know creators in our own right and we are morphing and changing you know the, the world according to our beliefs so what if that gnostic concept of the world was just an illustration of what happens when we are creating the world through our ego right and then of course you're going to have <laughs> nature has destructive forces Nature has things like large predators and destructive winds and floods and all the stuff. It's also got the divas of these things. It's got the, the spirits. There are spirits out there that, you know, are, can be destructive. And what if, as humans begin to become aware of these, in, in, in the absence of being able to see the higher picture, you know, what if human beings started to uh, um, pass judgment on these as evil, okay? They're, they're bringing into play a belief in e evil. They're, and as they begin to really, you know, focus on these things, I saw a video recently of, of a deer, a doe, who, this is a, web, um, a trail cam video, and she saw a hawk chasing a rabbit and she went and chased down that hawk and stomped it to death and like she was relentless she she would circle around and stomp and stomp and stomp it it must have been ted about a million times over by the time she was done and this is what the human ego will do it will really really stomp on things and 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 focus the human ego, ego will focus on problems. It will focus on things that it considers evil and focus and focus and focus. Well, if these are forces of nature, you, you can't destroy them, right? And so the, all the focus does is give power to it because the more you focus your energy on something, the more you feed into it, right? So if humans are doing this, you know, we're actually taking energies that are naturally existent in harmony in nature and we're feeding negative power into them well why wouldn't they grow into something like an archon some kind of demonic being right why wouldn't they and so maybe we've created a world in which we've given power to our concept of evil what would happen if we change those beliefs what would happen if we took the higher perspective and said hey you know the things that are happening to us the things that are not <laughs> not pleasant the things that are painful the things that appear destructive what if those are here to teach us and what if those were just here to to maintain 
some kind of harmony or order, even as strange as we can't even understand it from where we're at, but from a higher perspective, what if it all fits into the pattern? What if we started taking our focus off of that and started putting our focus onto the beauty and feeding into that? What kind of a world would we be create, creating then? What kind of a world can we create if we stop giving power to evil and begin to feed our power into the beautiful, into love and joy and grace and harmony and peace? and human oneness what would that world look like <laughs> okay so uh i think this kind of was a long convoluted conversation i hope that it starts a process of inquiry within you remember that like you don't have to believe anything that i've just said <laughs> anything right i really hope that you find your own beliefs and go with what you feel is the truth within you and may that truth bring you somewhere beautiful. Um, if, you're, if you would be interested in learning more about the 12 spiritual laws, I, I, have, uh, I will be giving a workshop on that. It will be either you know, free by donation, whichever works for you. Um, that link is gonna be in the description box below and we'll be discussing the 12 spiritual laws, why they're so important right now, especially for star seeds and light workers at this time of great awakening and how you can actually use that, the, those 12 spiritual principles to create a beautiful world. <laughs> Until, so you can sign up by following the link below and if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, this is a great time to subscribe. There's going to be more coming of channel material and more probably about the spiritual laws as well. Um, so I wish you all love, all happiness, all joy, all peace, all grace. Um, see you soon and remember that you were born to be free.